so hey i'm back uh i'm a bit too drunk to do vr and like figure all of that out so i'm just i'm back on the pc i'm just laying back and chilling uh i decided this would probably be the best option <laughs> sorry it took a while um, three drinks down. And I think I'll stop at three. Uh, just because I know that three is, uh, my, like, um, cohesive limit. Is my mic okay? I don't know if I'm too loud or too quiet. Uh... Or if I need to turn up the music. <laughs> I just quickly put this together. So it doesn't look the best. Um, but that's alright. You know, it is what it is. All good? Alrighty, thank you. Music's a bit low. I'll turn it up. Is that better? Or is that too loud? It's just a very like chill beat. Um, some lo-fi. Just, yeah, just wanted to talk. I haven't had like a sit down and talk stream in a while, actually. Oh, uh, I guess I did one last week. Is it last week or the week before? Must have been the week before. Here's Jack Hammer not fair. <laughs> oh, that might be why the music's a bit low for you. Cause um, it's telling me the music's just about as loud as I am. I know I'm not very loud, but you know. But yeah. <laughs> My birthday was on the 19th, so that was something. You were there in the morning. good okay thank you i don't know i i tried really hard to have a good birthday i think birthdays are tricky for a lot of people at least i think so i like to think i'm not the only one struggling with their birthday um but yeah, I did struggle quite a bit, actually. <laughs> uh, all I really did was, uh... You already jumped three birthday? Eh... Uh, what do you mean? Mmm... I don't know, I'm not very good with a lot of attention on me and I'm not good at taking gifts or money um and I'm trying to slowly come out of that you know it's hard because I'm raised like in a way that's like don't ever accept gifts don't accept money, don't accept anything you know But then my birthday rolls around and it's like, everyone wants to get you a little gift. And I think it's really nice if people care enough to go out of their way and get me something. I just never know how to accept it. Um, cause I want them to know like I'm thankful, but I don't want to be overbearing or I don't want to be annoying. 
three years I didn't make a birthday party, okay? Mm. Well, like, a lot of my family kicks us when it's my birthday. Uh, just cause they see my birthday as an excuse for, like, going out for dinner, or going out for drinks, or doing something they don't usually do. You know? And it's like, I get it, I get that you want to go do something, you want to have a reason to go do something, but like, is this really for me? If it's meant to be my birthday, and it's meant to be for me, why are we doing something I don't want to do? You know? And that's what my birthday felt like. Uh, cause I spent it with family. And then I'm having another one, uh, today, I think, at lunch or dinner, I'm not quite sure. And then on the weekend, I'm gonna go out and do something with friends. Uh, so hopefully that'll be good. I don't know, I haven't been in the best mindset. I try really, really hard uh, to be happy and to just come across as a generally happy person. Because I feel like that's a lot more acceptable, you know? I don't know. Being on Twitch is kind of like talking into a void. Like occasionally you get someone that talks back, <laughs> like you. Uh, but most of the time it's just talking into the void. Which I like. You know, I like the idea of being anonymous. I like the... I like the idea of talking to people that don't necessarily know my whole life, you know? It's nice. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Just because I'm not happy doesn't mean I'm sad. I don't know why people automatically think uh, when I say I'm not happy. Most people think I'm like sad. And it's just kind of, I'm cruising through life, you know? There's nothing really... There's nothing really that I would know what to do with. Like, <laughs> I don't know how that sounds, but I mean, in life-wise, I just don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I should do is the main thing I go through. I go through waves of feeling like I should be doing something. Um, which is hard, you know? I feel like I should do so much more than I already do. But doing any more than I do would probably not be good for me. <laughs> like, for most things, I know my limit. Um, because I've reached it so many times. So, <laughs> I've got a feel for my limit. Uh... The only problem is, like, sometimes other people try to tell me what my limit is, which is really strange. People tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing. Hmm. Uh. You got my switch, just make sure to use stop my study. 
Yeah. I feel like... Mm, I get what you mean. I don't know if I should like comment on- I don't know what Twitch's uh, things are, but I know my view on things is like... I personally feel that a lot of people with mental illness or like people that were just struggling uh, all of 2019 almost got a relief from COVID. It was like a very much needed break from life because life just seemed to stop when COVID hit. You know, things closed down, people were advised to stay home. A lot of people lost their jobs, which is horrible. You know, some people died. And I get that. I know what I get. I feel like the majority of people that have struggled like I have for COVID, it was- COVID acted almost like breathing room, if that makes sense. It's almost like finally stopping after a long jog, <laughs> you know? I've just been running through life, trying my best, not taking any breaks. But it's, it's been hard. And I won't lie and say that COVID wasn't almost a break from all of that. More people suffering, but for me, I feel like it was something to do with before COVID. I mean, it's good you've got some normalcy and a lot of time where people just didn't have structure or normalcy or even you know, guaranteed food. I'm always very careful with these subjects, but I feel like I just word them wrong. You know, a lot of people have political views or have political sides they are on. Or they have very strong opinions about things. And like, I feel like I don't fit in with that kind of strong opinions on things. <laughs> I'm much more of a, a person who just kind of goes with the flow. I like to hear other people's opinions. Uh, I don't usually give my opinion uh, unless it's on Twitch. Then I seem to give my opinion a lot more. <laughs> It might be because I, I talk a lot more. Uh, but usually I'm just like silently listening to people's opinions. Whether I agree with them or not doesn't really matter to me. Hearing other people's opinions I think is good so that you, brise it, uh, you <laughs> broaden your horizons. I think a lot of life experience comes from talking to people yes like i think majority experience comes from actually experiencing life but you can't experience everything life has to offer but you can share in other people's lives you know you can share in their experiences COVID for there to be a lot more people online than there usually was, you know? A lot of extroverts found themselves drawn to Discord or Twitch or even just social media in general during COVID, which, because I'm, I'm pretty sure the majority of people on the internet are introverts. Who I personally am. I don't know statistically if there are. Those are just my thoughts and opinions. But during the whole COVID thing, I met a lot more people 
that were extroverted, that had such different lives to me, you know? Part of that was because I was also experiencing VR chat in VR for the first time. Uh, but I think also COVID added to that. people can't live with work I know I'm someone who needs something to do I need something to keep me busy I don't like sitting around I don't like you know taking a breather and watching TV that's just really not my style I prefer to be doing something like with my hands or just talking Eh? What's with the smiley face? Did that sound bad? I feel like that sounded bad. <laughs> what I mean by doing something with my hands is like knitting, painting, hyperactivity? No? I don't know. I think it's the need to be productive for me personally. I don't know if it's like that for other people, but I feel like for me, it's if I'm doing nothing, I'm not productive. If I'm taking a break, I'm not productive. That's what it feels like. It doesn't help that a lot of my life was planned out for me, you know? So for me, life was just kind of from point A to point B. It wasn't really any... How do I say this? Space to breathe? It was kind of just like, alright, I finished this, now on to this. All, all the free time I did have got taken up by some other hobby, you know? I took on acting classes, I took on voice classes, I took on, um, <laughs> I took on design, I took on architecture, product design and marketing. At least you want to make stuff, it's better than wanting to make nothing. I mean, yeah, I have the need to do something, to make something of myself before I become nothing. A lot of the time, I don't want to do anything. I feel like I need to do something. And I know that for my health, it's better that I am doing something. I'm very much an all or nothing person. I either put all my chips on the deck or I just don't play. And I'm that way for most things in my life. But I really need to learn how to compromise and just... <laughs> and just try to learn how to take things in small breaks. <laughs> they don't need to chat. They can just listen or watch whatever they want to do. It's nice having people around to talk to that won't necessarily talk over me. I'm very much used to being talked over in conversations. Um, so it's, it's kind of odd for me to have almost the speakerphone in a conversation. Oh yeah, I don't know if you were around for this when this happened. 
but I mentioned a, <laughs> a while back that I wanted, I really, really, really wanted a uh, bubblegum scented perfume. And I got it for my birthday. <laughs> Well, it's also because of my voice, you know, like, I, I've gotten a fair amount of compliments on it online, uh, but I've also gotten a lot of criticism for it, or I'm just not taken seriously due to the fact that I sound how I do, and it's not something I can necessarily help. I mean, yeah, I could use a voice changer. But I don't think that it help the actual problem. You know, I sound a lot younger than I am. A, a lot of people say I put on a voice because my tone changes. Whereas I think my tone changing is just kind of natural. That's how voices work. You know, I get happy. My voice goes higher. I get... I mumble, I, <laughs> I stumble with my words. But a lot of people see that as like, oh, she sounded like this for a moment. That must be like her real voice. Which is just silly. Um, I've got a lot of criticism from today and school years. I've been online for a, a, most of my life. Um, so I'm very much like desensitized to it but the initial criticism <laughs> the initial criticism still gets to me hi kana you know i'm i'm very much used to not being taken seriously all the things I say almost being taken as a joke. <laughs> Thanks. I used to actually think my voice was quite deep. Uh, just cause when I hear my voice, like, I don't know, I think my voice sounds deep, but that just might be me mumbling, because I do mumble a lot, whereas when I stream I try very hard to articulate what I'm saying, because uh, I know I mumble. The New Zealand accent in general is a lot of mumbling, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know how to explain it other than New Zealanders uh, mumbling Brits. <laughs> you reckon everyone hears their voice more deeper? I don't know. I think most people hear their voice a lot higher. I know for a lot of guys I know, they think their voice is higher than it is. And it's just not. <laughs> Whereas I think my voice is deeper than it is, but it's just not. You know? I know that I personally prefer uh, a deeper female voice than my own. I like really deep singers too. Uh, Anna Pantsu was a great, she has a great voice. I really like her covers. Uh, you just like your own voice because it's higher? See? Like, uh, when I play back recordings of my voice, I'm like, whoa, I sound so small. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no better way to put it. I just sound small. But like, as I'm talking now, I think my voice is quite deep. But that might just be my imagination, you know? And it probably is. 
I think that most recording softwares and microphones pick up on higher pitches. Like, um, I remember a friend's voice that was so deep that his mic just wouldn't pick it up sometimes. And it was the funniest thing. You sound like a 14 to 16. Yeah, I know I do. Oh, dear lord. And I'm in my 20s. And it's like, I, I'm i almost waiting for second puberty to hit, so then maybe my voice drops. I doubt that's gonna happen, though. Because uh, it's like, my voice is higher naturally, yeah. But my voice is also higher just because of my um, my medical stuff. I've got a lot of issues with hormones. Uh, which is why my voice is higher. It's it's why a lot of things about me are very outwardly feminine, if that makes sense. I'm not gonna describe myself, but outwardly feminine. <laughs> feminine. I gotta just go more adult. You reckon? I don't know. It's really weird. Uh, my brother, who is in his teens, is substantially taller than me. Like, I know I'm a short stack, but dear lord, is that guy big. Like, even compared to people who are average height, he's humongous, and I feel like I was cheated. <laughs> Like, he took all the height away from me. <laughs> you know, he got all the good genes. Uh, the good tall genes, and I got all the small genes. <laughs> you live in Hobbit Island, don't worry. Wow! <laughs> That's so true, yet so mean. Nah, that's not mean. I'm just gonna say it's mean though, so I feel better. New Zealand's a really interesting place to live. The older I get, the more I see uh, other cultures, the more I hear about other cultures. And I realized just how unique and strange New Zealand's culture is. I've talked about this before, uh, last year actually. Um, I don't think... I don't think most people know. Have you been to Hobbit... Hobbiton? No, I haven't. Is that in New Zealand? I haven't actually traveled a lot. I've been to maybe two cities in Australia and maybe five in New Zealand. They left the set there. Oh. I'll have to look it up because I've got no idea where it is. I'm pretty sure most of the filming for the Hobbit was done in the South Island and I live in the North Island. Uh, most people on the uh, North and South Islands stay on their islands, if that makes sense. Like I've never been to the South, but I've been to Australia. You know, I've been to a whole nother country before I've ever been to the other half of New Zealand. New Zealand is very clan based, I think is the best way to describe it for people that don't live here. Um, we call them tribes. It's almost like little posses, little groups. 
you know, you stay in your area, you occasionally visit maybe the closest one to you. I haven't done a lot of traveling in general, and I probably won't ever do a lot of traveling. Um, I'm just not really the traveling type. You've only visited 10% of France's famous places? Yeah, I don't... The, the only thing I've seen from The Hobbit is this massive hawk uh, in an airplane center. It's like a whole uh, airport that's just themed around everything to do with the Hobbit and I think that's because that's where we get a lot of our tourists come in um, so it's mainly for them also hearing about just like how much city infrastructure other can't uh, <laughs> other countries have it makes me really appreciate the fact that I'm not even five minutes away from open pastures you know we've got these big expansive orchards and fields and just cattle like everywhere around me like there's even a local mountain place I could go you know There's just so much nature and like preserved wildlife. England, Germany. Whoa, you've been to a lot of places. Do you enjoy traveling? I know that I personally don't. I like to, I like to stay somewhere I know. But you can't get to know a place <laughs> unless you go to it, you know? Oh, I accidentally bumped a can. My foot is falling asleep. So I'm like shuffling around, uh, trying to wake it up. Uh, I, yeah, I am very lucky that I was raised in New Zealand. If I was even one generation before me, um, I would not have been raised in a first world country. Because I'm pretty sure this is common knowledge, uh, if you watch my streams a fair amount, but I'm Islander, which is uh, apparently not a very common term. <laughs> that people know outside of New Zealand. Um, it's basically like the whole Polynesian region. So, you know, uh, I like to travel, but that is I work a lot and don't really have time. Yeah. That sucks. Um, but yeah, I'm half Islander, uh, which is a third world. Most Islanders come from poverty struck in third world countries or second world countries. I know for my, uh, my bloodline, I came from a third world country. Uh, so I'm very thankful to my parents that we moved to New Zealand. Like, they specifically, or one of them specifically moved to New Zealand. 
just to have me. Which is like a very big deal because coming to New Zealand isn't cheap, even for places like America, we're just so far away. Yeah, we have the islands close to us, most of them, um, but that's still a reasonable amount for most people to save up, most islanders to save up. Not to mention, you know, they have to have savings, they have to have permission, well, I don't think they have to anymore, but back in the day they needed permission uh, to come to New Zealand. Very, very few of them could come to New Zealand. Um, my father actually put a lot of infrastructure in the company he works at so that more people like him could come over more easily. It's basically like a seasonal pass uh, for people to visit the country. Which wasn't a thing before in the company. English for X could be very basic English. Yeah, I, I'm no good with languages. Nearly, I'm pretty sure most people in New Zealand know at least two languages. Like, I think our average is like 2.5, which is like amazing. It's very common, but to me that doesn't take away... <laughs> Bonjour, just how amazing that is. I think there's a lot of amazing parts about New Zealand and just people in general. Like I have a very love and hate relationship with New Zealand's culture. There's some things where I think it's it's so messed up. <laughs> you know? Like it's so old fashioned yet yet comforting. Cause I'm most locals know each other in the small areas. Most locals know each other. Hi. I'm doing pretty alright. The alcohol's calmed down. Uh, I've had some water. I'm a bit too drunk to get in VR. Um, but I'm doing pretty alright. The average is low. Oh no, 0 0.8. Really? A lot less drunk? Yeah. Alcohol usually hits me pretty hard in the beginning, and then it tapers down. Uh, I did woof down the first can I had though, but after that I started taking it a lot more slow. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's a certain quota you have to reach to officially be dubbed fluent in that language and they just don't re th reach that quota. So yes, they might speak the English language, but do they meet the specific, uh, sorry, I'm thinking, so I click, I click when I think, the government standard of what is fluent in a language, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense, because <laughs> I don't know how to word it. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I think uh, my father can read, write, uh, clicking, yeah. That's clicking to me. It can also be called snapping, snapping and clicking. I know New Zealand has a lot of weird names for things. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure what the names that they use in other countries are. Snapping? You could say snapping. 
Uh, the most popular one I have heard is clicking. I think. Clickings with the Mel. Uh, it's pretty common for people to do the or the thing. That's pretty. That's very common. Um, so like one of them means we're being told off. <laughs> so the louder the saliva, the more in trouble you are. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> no, as I was saying, New Zealand's culture, from my understanding, because uh, please keep in mind these are all just my thoughts, opinions, and views, um, is that we're very community based and family based. Like you don't have to be blood related at all to be considered family. I think that's like a pretty general concept, but actually putting it into action is a lot, a lot more uncommon I feel. Like saying like, oh, she's my best friend, she's like a sister, is generally used as a saying. Or being like, they're so close, they're family, is a saying. Where in New Zealand, a lot of people that aren't related biologically are family. And it's been like that for so many generations that they've lost track of who's blood related and who's not. And I know that's something I personally have in my family, where it's like, we don't actually know who's blood related or not. <laughs> Just because, one, we have such a huge family, and two, we've, we've considered people that were just unrelated people who were put into the category as family, we've considered them actual blood related family for so long that we no longer know whether or not that's true you remember me saying this yeah it it's extremely common it's also how jobs work here um where if you know the people, even if you're completely unqualified, if you know the person who was in charge of giving that job to someone, eight times out of ten, you're gonna get that job. You know? I had no experience with, uh, <laughs> with anything to do with the food industry or with work in general yet I got hired uh, as soon as I turned 16 no it was before that wasn't it it was I got hired as soon as you can which is I think 12 and you need your parents permission and they don't legally have to say uh, they don't legally have to pay you minimum wage. I worked at a pizza place, you know? Not because I was good or was qualified or even old enough. I just knew the people. My job is to meet with every... Yep. I'm meeting other records of... No, not usually. Samoan isn't a language I see written down a lot. Nearly all the notes my dad makes are in English because they just don't have words for certain things. Especially a lot of the things that are new to them. So like... Mm. 
a lot of words that we use today, I feel like almost exclude people that speak other languages unless they get to know the culture of the English language. Because I do think there's a culture around every language itself, you know, where little conjunctions are born, uh, descriptive words that mean a completely different thing in different contexts. Got to work. Nice hearing you. All right. Enjoy your time at work, man. Have a good day. <laughs> I don't want to exclude you. I'm just saying. Um, you know? Because I feel like, yeah, you might know what the words mean in that language. But when a native speaker is using them, it's almost always different than what you were taught. And that nearly, like, doubly re applies to the English language. With, like, slang terms like yeet or swag or... Uh, people now using bread and uh, cake and dough <laughs> in different terms. Yeah, it's all context. But like how little, like how linguistics form over time is extremely fascinating. I'm no expert in the matter, but I implore you to research even just a little bit about the how linguistics change and how linguistics form over time. Like a lot of today's little um, language quirks come from the internet where it's like pog is one. If you were learning language for the first time and you heard pog, I'm pretty sure you'd be very confused. <laughs> comes from its own history sometimes uh sometimes it's shortened abbreviations other times it's something that's so heavily referenced that it becomes associated with something else so like twitch um a jerking motion of something you know it's a jerk it's a motion but if I said Twitch, to most people online, they'd think, oh, it's the streaming website, you know? That's what I mean. It's just completely fascinating. Linguistics out or like uh, offline and online are two very different things, and I understand that. I just think they're both incredibly interesting. No one uses outside of English internet, yeah. I'm trying to get into um, painting again. Uh, because originally, instead of streaming, I was gonna try out uh, painting. Like, uh, to make a living. Just due to medical issues it's nearly impossible for me to hold down a normal job at the moment I, i'm hoping that this will change that things will improve um but it is unlikely so that's actually originally why i started streaming um and I was streaming for like insane hours. I say insane, but they're pretty normalized on Twitch. 
like I, I was streaming eight six hours a day as someone who was brand new to streaming and I wasn't even getting one viewer and it was really stressing me out um I have a multi like I have a lot of conditions and they're just too much to go into uh also I'm not very comfortable with actually saying what I have I'm comfortable admitting I have problems um I'm not comfortable saying what they are so sorry I hope that makes sense But yeah, that's why I started streaming at the end of last year. And like, I gave up because it just wasn't fun. And I think that was mainly because I was doing it with the idea in mind that like I wanted something to happen. You know, almost an expectation that I just didn't meet. Because I think I streamed for like a month or two. I'm not quite sure. Whereas now, it's fun. And I just stream whatever. Um, But before it almost felt like a box that I couldn't get out of. You know? Uh, so in a medical study, like, learning about it. Yeah, I, I understand. You like acquiring knowledge on the subject. You don't like the actual subject itself. So, yeah. I'm trying to get back into painting. Uh, just so I, like, have that independence, you know, financial independence. But it's really hard. <laughs> um, it is quite hard. Uh, because with how I am... Unless I feel like painting, it never turns out well, <laughs> you know? Um, I think I posted something on my Instagram the other day, and I was just- I wasn't happy with it at all. But you've got to make stuff, you've got to put stuff out there, just so you can have something out there, you know? It was the feeling of, I want to make something, anything. Uh, is your clumsiness... A part of it, yeah. I, I am just also a very naturally clumsy person. And I'm like, I can't see very well <laughs> on top of that. Smell? Smile? I think it's nice just to chill like this every once in a while. In, in games, I feel I'm very upbeat. <laughs> and then the moment you sit me down and talk to me, uh, I feel like I can sometimes come across as depressing. Just because I love talking about... Well, I wouldn't say love. I enjoy talking about deeper topics. Even if they are kind of depressing. It doesn't take away from the fact that I like being able to talk about them. You know? Whereas with when I'm playing video games, I usually focus on the video game or the chat. 
I don't really focus on what I'm saying as much. Uh, no, your English isn't bad. Your English isn't bad. You're learning English. Like, yeah, you can talk fluently in English, at least from our conversations, uh, <laughs> you can talk fluently, in my opinion. It's just that you're still learning English, you know? I'm still learning English. I learn words that I d just didn't know existed before. We're just at both different journeys in learning English, you know? And the fact that you picked up English after your native language should say a lot about how hard you've worked, even if you don't see it that way. I don't know. I, it's like I said before, I have a lot of respect for people that can speak multiple languages, even if it's like very, a uh, little, it, it's still respectable in my opinion. Because my dad's English, uh, most people would say he's not very good at English. I beg to differ. It, you know? Like, yeah, my dad has a heavy accent, so he says things maybe a bit weirdly. But he's fully fluent and can hold a conversation. And to me, that's amazing you know i think it says a lot about someone's character if they can even attempt learning a language like i don't know you don't have to like read shakespeare to learn english i think after you reach a certain point you stop actively searching out ways to learn it and you just learn it more naturally you know through conversations through online through billboards through books there's so much english in the everyday world because it's such a prominent language in the west so i feel like no matter where you are if you have some exposure to Western culture, you'll be exposed to new English words. <laughs> oh, I stopped reading books as well. I used to love them, but as I got older, of course the school system kind of turned reading into a chore. And also I think we just, I just have a lot less time than I did when I was younger. I don't necessarily have time to read a two hour book. Or well, to read two hours, to read for two hours. You know? nor do I have the patience. The internet has made it so that we get everything pretty much instantly. You know? And there's so many pretty flashy things on the internet that whenever I look at a book, it's just kind of underwhelming. Like, why would I read a book? when I can listen to an audiobook while playing video games, you know? <laughs> I feel like multitasking has also become a lot more prevalent as social medias come about. You know, now people don't just sit and watch TV. They sit and watch TV, and go on their phone. I 
I also use a lot of um, English subtitles. Yeah, it's alright. I understand. <laughs> yeah. I use a lot of English subtitles in most things I watch. Um, even if it's in English. Just because I, I prefer reading what they're saying over hearing it. That's why Twitch is good for me. <laughs> you know, because I can read at my own pace. Where with recordings and videos, I can't really do that. But yeah, there is subtle subtle English things that people do. I don't personally pick on pick up on them much because my native language and my only language is English. Um When I was younger, I used to be able to speak my father's native language, but due to schooling and like the majority of people in my life using English, it kind of just got hammered out of me, which is really sad. And I'm almost scared to pick the language back up. You know? So that might also be why uh, my accent isn't doesn't really sound like a New Zealander. Uh it might it might be because when I was younger I, d I didn't speak English. <laughs> apparently I just refused to speak English. I just hated the language apparently. <laughs> I wish the universal, well not universal, but I wish the most widely spread western language was a lot easier for other countries to learn. Because a lot of people say English is the hardest language. I've heard a lot of different things from a lot of different people. Thank you. Yeah. I find it really, it's very mixed emotions. I do wonder what it would have been like if I didn't speak that language first and then English. You know, what would I sound like if my first language was English? Would I sound different? It's a pain in the ass for everyone. Okay. Would I still sound like me if I didn't lose my first language? Yeah, my tone might be the same, but the way of pronouncing things, would that be different? Would it have, would it have affected my education more? I won't deny that uh, being <laughs> that speaking English has been a very big contributing factor into my education when I was younger. The fact that I could speak English, like and only English wasn't a problem because English was the only language I knew. Whereas a lot of people in New Zealand, I feel, get confused between the two languages, especially in school. You know, so they might not always understand what the teacher's saying. I know a couple friends who are like that. Where because 
because their language didn't have a certain word in English, they had nothing to compare it to. New Zealand's relatively good with um, molding the Māori language and English language together. Like, uh, we use Māori language in everyday talk. It's everywhere. We have uh, Māori-only channels. Māori is the native language of New Zealand, if you're wondering. Um, but I still feel like people that speak two languages are almost at a disadvantage when it comes to official testing you know like exams or essays because we do that all in English uh, English 30% French 58 of Saxons um, Asians and Polynesians, I, I don't know if most people group them into the same category. I know that I personally don't, but they're very similar, both culture-wise and native tongue-wise. So, like, my father doesn't speak Māori at all. Uh, he's never learnt the language, but since his native language is is close to Māori, he can understand a fair amount of the language, which I think is really cool, you know? Because it has its roots. Yeah. Polynesian and Asian cultures share a lot of the same uh, values. Because nearly every, <laughs> nearly every Asian person I've talked to about my upbringing uh, <laughs> has basically had a very similar upbringing to me. Like, yes, there's differences, but with most people, I can't relate to them and their upbringings. You know, they see my upbringing as something really weird um, or really bad because they don't understand the culture that comes with it. And there's not a lot of people in my culture that look like me, uh, cause I'm mixed. So finding someone that's Asian and that can relate to me was really comforting. Cause I look closer to Asian than I do to my actual culture. <laughs> the same values because the western people <laughs> but very oh dear western people have some very weird cultures I won't lie It's 2am already? Gosh, that went fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
don't really know what to talk about. I just kind of wanted to sit down and chill, think, talk. What time is it for you? Fifteen to three AM? Yeah, three PM. It's very sunny. I'm not a big fan of the sun. I, I much prefer rainy days or cloudy days where there's like there's light but it's not like blinding me <laughs> when jackhammer is doing stuff oh dude that sounds like fun You'll survive. That's good. Please do survive. Too. That's good. The only problem with rainy days is that I don't like my shoes getting wet. Uh, <laughs> cause I need new shoes. I haven't like had the money to buy any really. I got some money for my birthday, so that's probably what I'll buy new shoes. Um, but when it rains, like my shoes get soggy all through. <laughs> So, I don't like going outside on a rainy day. It makes a nice excuse to rest at the house and play console all day. Yeah. Da -da. Should I play some video games? So my parents catch me and throw me outside and say go for a walk and find a girlfriend. <laughs> oh yeah. I've had the urge to play Genshin Impact again. Which I think was my, uh, the second game I ever played. I think it was Genshin Impact. I also don't know what to title my videos. I feel like a lot of people find my stuff and are very confused by my voice and my demeanor. Because <laughs> a lot of people I see like uh, tend to join and leave. And I'm like, oh, is it something I did? <laughs> or is it just because, you know, high voice, I sound quite young. Um, I sound kind of like a VTuber, so I don't think they were expecting me, <laughs> you know? I don't think they were expecting my voice, necessarily. Mm 
Monster Hunter? A lot of people I know have been playing Monster Hunter, actually. I wonder why that is. Is... Because I, I had never heard of Monster Hunter as a series before this year. I've never really played Nintendo games. It, it wasn't until I got older. Uh, <laughs> okay, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't get a Nintendo DS until maybe last year. A uh, Nintendo 3DS, my bad. Not a DS DS. But I have wanted one for so many years. Since it came out, I've wanted the original DS. Um. But you know, it was in a time where video games weren't for girls. <laughs> And uh, my family was very much against me playing video games because video games aren't for girls. A lot of that stigma is gone now. Um, and my parents... Uh, my mother actually helped me get a game for my 3DS. You know, so their views on video games have changed a lot. I appreciate that my parents uh, continue to grow and expand their horizons and knowledge. I play since I was taller, so I can't. That's fine. It just means you've grown up with it your whole life. Alrighty. Oh, big stretch. I might, um... I might play some League of Legends before I go to bed. Because once I stop streaming, I usually go to bed. Uh, because I'm really tired after streaming. Uh, <laughs> just because streaming tends to take a fair amount out of me. Uh... You know, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, things like that. You've grown up into games and animes and films. Mmm. I grew up in a, in a mixture of Islander and Westerner culture. Um. So, like, the only, t the only uh, DVD we had was Mamma Mia. So I watched Mamma Mia on repeat for 16, 15 years of my life. Because <laughs> it was the only CD we had. <laughs> and um, the only time we got to play video games was when my older brother came around and he gave us his old playstation so that we could play video games and he left it in the garage so that our parents wouldn't find it and by the time they found it it was too late because we were already addicted <laughs> uh but we played um tekken and god of war a lot of tekken uh crash bandicoot we had that um, it was a robot game, I don't remember what it was. It was a voodoo game, uh, like a voodoo character. I don't know, I, I have mixed feelings about piracy. I think it's very situational based. I think if there's a way to support the industry that you like, you should. But I also understand that for a lot of people, they might not be able to even access uh, 
you know, things like anime or certain films or certain games because of where they're from or because of other things, you know? So I won't necessarily promote piracy, um, but I do understand the culture behind piracy. Alright, I'm going to uh, like close the windows and get a jersey on because it is freezing. <laughs> um, and then I'll probably log on to League and play some of that. So, uh, give me about, I'd say five minutes and I'll be back. Alrighty, thank you.